I'm delighted to say it's time for the Sporting Life Masters preview in the company of Ben Coley. Oh, Ben, I'm looking forward to this. What a week of sport we have. A number of people asking, Ben, first up, how different is this going to be to the Masters in November? Yeah, I think significantly. Um, already on Monday, we had uh, a few press conferences coming through. Adam Scott said the Greens are as firm as he's seen them since 2007. Um, and he, he should know he's been there every year for almost 20 years now. And, and all the players kind of agreed in that. And if you think back to November, all the records tumbled. Uh, DJ shot 20 under par. Uh, Cameron Smith became the first man ever to break 70 on all four days at Augusta and didn't even win. Um, it was the lowest scoring uh, renewal of the Masters ever. And I think uh, we'll see a reaction to that. I think the, the guys at Augusta, they, they don't like seeing They're their course like taken apart. No, no. So I think it'd be considerably tougher in the first instance, but also just the nature of the course, the, the run out you see on the ball. And, and the greens will be more familiar to people who've watched the Masters for so long. You know, we expect to see people make, um, making a fool of themselves at times on the greens. And that wasn't the case back in November. I was watching the Today at the Masters yesterday and Bryson DeChambeau is still the headline act. If it's fast and firm, as you described there, is it going to suit him and who will it suit? It'd be interesting to see what Bryson does, because obviously he came here in uh, November and, you know, what did he say? 67 is par for him and almost missed the cut and was never really a factor, despite birding his first hole, actually, at which point I think he was about five to one favourite. Um Look, I, I don't think it's necessarily in his favour, but the one thing Bryson has done throughout his career is he, he's found the answers. You know, he, a lot of people thought he wouldn't be able to cope with winged foot and it proved perfect for him where he won the US Open by a, by a long way. And, and I think he'll, he'll figure out Augusta. The thing that's caused issues for him has been the greens. Um, and as they'll be really fast and really firm, I, I think there's a big question to answer there. And, and of all the, the big names at the front of the market, he's the one who's yet to prove his Augusta credentials, really. Um, and that sets him apart among uh, a high class bunch of favourites. And amongst those bunch, just who's that? who are the conditions really going to be in favour of, do you think? Well, I think Jordan Spieth would be the one who's really licking his lips. You know, obviously a winner for the first time in almost four years last week in Texas. So he's timed his run to perfection. Some people will tell you that's a negative because it's 15 years since someone won the tournament the week before the Masters and then, then went on to win at Augusta. But I think we're talking about a very different type of player to most of those who've won the event before the Masters in Jordan Spieth. He's really confident. Um, he likes to work the ball both ways, shape his shots and really think about things. The harder things get, the better. You know, he's won an Open Championship at, at Royal Birkdale. He's won here at Augusta when it played really tough. And in 2016, when he should have won it, that's probably as tough as it's played in the last five or six years as well. So um, it'll certainly certainly suit him. I also think it suits Justin Thomas quite nicely. I think he'll tell you he does prefer to play the ball on the ground a bit more than, than perhaps a Dustin Johnson um, or even a John Rahm. Uh, and JT's main thing against the, the world-class players, I suppose, he's probably that 10 or 15 yards shorter off the tee. And that might help him here because when, when you get to the rest of the game, I think he's probably the best in the world, you know, from, a, from the approach shot and in. Um, I don't think there's anyone as, as good as Justin Thomas, who, of course, won the players a couple of weeks ago. So I think he arrives with a, with a really good chance. And in, you've mentioned Americans there. You look at Skybet's market, the Americans are dominating. Is that the way you see it? Yeah, I mean, look, they, they, they've got four of the very best players in the world right now. And, and there are some slight question marks, I suppose, about the pick of the Europeans and the international challenge. Um, you know, you could argue the Australian challenge in particular is not as strong as it perhaps was when when Adam Scott and Jason Day were at the very peak of their powers five or six years ago. But yeah, um, you know, the Americans have uh, have got an excellent chance, certainly through Thomas and, and Dustin Johnson, but also that second wave of player. You go beyond the elite and they've got, a, you think, you know, Colin Morikawa was not really on anyone's lips and, and yet yeah, he's a major champion already. Um, Patrick Reed, of course, a former winner here, I think will do, do for a lot of people with those each way terms you can get this week. So a very strong challenge. I think it's likely we get an American winner, but there are a couple of, of non-Americans. I've certainly got my own as well. So let's talk about those each way terms. It sounds quite exciting from a Skybet point of view. And honestly, I've got um, readers questions to come to, Ben, which we'll come to in, in, in a second. But mo most of them are asking for an each way shout to take advantage of those each way terms. Yeah, and, and look, it's a lot of people will, I guess you can see it two ways. When you get 11 places, you, you can take the attitude that it doesn't really matter if you've got a player who you don't necessarily think can win the tournament. You know, um, someone at 150 to 1 who finishes seventh is 
is just as good as backing the winner at 10 to 1. So um, a lot of people take that approach. The, the other way you can see it, I suppose, is that, um, you know, someone like Justin Thomas would have to have a pretty bad week to not be threatening 11th place. Um, you know, he was fourth here in November, and I think he was 12th the year before. Um, the one I really like at a big price, and he, he's probably someone who's not necessarily that familiar to, to casual golf fans, uh, who I dare say tune in, you know, for the Masters and perhaps not every every week, uh, would be Si Woo Kim. Um, he's only 25 years old. He's a three-time PGA Tour winner. He's won the Players' Championship. He's actually the youngest man in history to win the Players' Championship. Um, and he's got some good Augusta form. His last three visits, he's been just outside the top 20. And, and this year, he's healthy. Um, he's hitting the ball as well as he has in a long time. He's actually part of Claude Harmon's stable. So that includes um, Dustin Johnson, used to include Brooks Kepka as well. Um, he's rubbing shoulders with some of the best players around in practice. And, and he's taking it out on the course as well. He was a winner in January. And I think if you were to narrow it down to one thing which ties in a lot of major champions, it's that they've won in the recent past. And I think for players like Paul Casey, um, for Bryson DeChambeau, but also for someone like Siwoo Kim, um, having that recent experience of winning, and he, and he beat Patrick Cantlay, who's a world-class player, uh, it'll serve him really well. So I think at about 100 to 1, you know, to, to grab one of those 11 places, uh, he made a lot of appeal, yeah. Love it. That's your long price fancy, if you like. Come on, then. Who's going to win it and who's on the short list? I, I think Justin Thomas has got an outstanding chance. I, I understand why he's not the favourite, um, but if you want the best form guide so far this year, I think it's the Players' Championship. It's the strongest field of the year. He was a dominant winner, and he did it without putting well. Um, and if you look through JT's record, actually, he's won a number of tournaments without putting well, and that tells you he's one of the best iron players certainly I've ever seen. I, I think he's, along with Morikawa, the best iron player we've seen since Tiger Woods, um, whose record here is obviously outstanding. And Augusta is. Uh, a second shot golf course, uh, provided you you don't suffer any great disasters off the tee. It's what you do with that second shot. Can you find the right section of the greens, not just the green itself, but get it to those flags that are tucked away on, on shelves and what have you. I don't think there's anybody in this field who's going to be more comfortable doing that, working the ball both ways um, than Justin Thomas and having won his last stroke play start, his biggest win in four years, putting behind him what was a very difficult start to 2021. Um, I think he's got an outstanding chance, but I do want to just save a word for Rory McIlroy as well um, we wouldn't necessarily say firm conditions would suit Rory um, certainly he's been at his best when when the mud's been flying to use a racing term um, but I quite like how he comes into this under the radar I love the fact he's working with Pete Cowan now a, a brilliant coach who uh, helped Danny Willett win this tournament and, and Henrik Stenson win the Open um, I could see him surprising people and it sounds odd to say surprising people because he's uh, six top tens in his last seven minute visits so I think he's a solid each way bet as well that's interesting because this, this leads us to the reader's questions. James P says, you're not losing patience with Rory this week. Should I oppose him in a match bet or just leave him alone? Look, anyone who reads my stuff every week will realise I've, I've been on Rory four times already this year. I have to hold my hands up and I've been wrong. You know, um, I really fancied him in Phoenix and he double bogeyed the first hole. And, and that was that. I, I fancied him at the concession. He finished six when, you know, he made a couple of mistakes on Friday. The thing with Rory, and, it, and it's also something that's happened prior to some of his best play, He's making the odd big costly mistake. We saw him put two balls in the water at Sawgrass. Those are the things he needs to iron out. But when I see Rory making six or seven birdies around, I feel like he's close. And I know I'm, I'm probably not far off being alone in that opinion, but I don't think he's far away. Um, so I'm going to give him another go. I, I fully understand. I think if anyone reads my preview this week, um, I, I think that's the one they might struggle with. And I, I don't think there'll be that many people putting up Rory this week. But I think if you can get 18 to 1, 11 places, you know, you're going to, it's about 11 to 8 your money losing the win part that he finishes in the top 11. And he's done that in six of the last seven years, varying conditions and not always in form. So, yeah, I said I was going to keep these answers short, Ed. I've not done that there. Uh, but <laughs> it's, hopefully, Rory. It's, Rory. it's Rory. It's okay. Yes, exactly. I've got two Andrews asking about conditions in November and the comparison. I think we've done that. Uh, Connor B. Now, this is a guy you've mentioned once. We're talking about a major here. You've only mentioned him once so far. And Connor B. says, if Brooks Kepka declares himself fit and plays, then surely 25 to 1 on him is one of the biggest values on the board available. Could he win a green jacket just weeks after a knee off? Yeah, well, th that's the interesting and difficult question to answer, isn't it? Um, you know, when he was second at the concession a few weeks ago, it's the last time he played. Uh, having won in Phoenix uh, two weeks before that, he was 16, 14 to one for the Masters. He's drifted to 25 to one without hitting a ball, uh, but he has gone under the knife, uh, dislocated his right knee. Uh, if you hear reports from the course, Butch Harmon and Pete Cowan both say he's swinging it 
beautifully. They both also say the concern is can he walk 72 holes? Augusta is the most undulating course they play all year. It's a hard walk. If he can do that, 25 to 1 will look a steal. I think of all the players under 50 to 1, he's the one who could look dramatically overpriced, but it is a worry. Yeah, it does sound like there is a, a, an if and a but there. Phil B says, if you had to rank all stats, which would come out on top as the most important for picking a Masters winner? It always used to be greens in regulation. Um, in, in recent years, we've, we've been given a new set of stats, which are so much more um, informative, and they're the strokes gained stats, which effectively tell you not just how many greens a player has hit, but the value of the shot they hit. Um, and it's strokes gained approach, which has been massively important in this tournament. Three of the last six champions here actually led the field for the week. All six of them ranked in the top five. Dustin Johnson hit more greens than anybody has ever hit in the Masters in one tournament. So um, the, the guy who's on with his, with his second shot is the one. So strokes gained approach. And if you look at that, the last three years, Justin Thomas is the standout player um, right up there with him currently is Colin Morikawa and someone like Paul Casey, who I like each way is another who's reliably consistent with his, uh, with his approach play. Warren L says he's, he's backing Jordan Spieth. He says his live outsider is someone I've never even heard of Ben. Will Zalatoris. Is that right? That is right. And you'll be hearing a lot more of him. And um, this oh, really? is a re really interesting story. He, um, this time last year, he was outside the world's top 500, didn't have a PGA Tour card in no time at all. Um, he's secured his card. He's entered the world's top 50 to qualify. He's finished sixth in the US Open. Um, he's not yet won on the PGA Tour, and he's now making his Masters debut. Now, it's 1979, the last time a debutant won the Masters. That was Fuzzy Zeller, but he'd won on the PGA Tour. To win your first event at this level in the Masters, it seems beyond um, my mind's comprehension, to be honest. But the rules are changing. You know, Colin Morikawa won the US PGA very early on in his career. And uh, Matt Wolf contended for the US Open in his first major start. So I, I think Zalatoris is interesting each way. To win this tournament would require, I mean, we're talking about a genuine superstar if he does uh, go and do that. I will remember the name, that is for sure. A couple more for you, Ben. Uh, people asking about their outsiders, clearly with the 11 places. Patrick H says, how do you rate the chance of C.T. Pan and Carlos Ortiz? Yes, yeah, C.T. Pan was seventh here in November. He comes back having been third last time. I think if you put those two things together, a lot of people would be surprised you can have 250 to one. Um, that's because everything else he's done in the last six months has been poor. And it's whether that effort in November was, was the exception or whether it indicates some kind of fondness for Augusta. We'll see. He wouldn't be one I'm particularly keen on, but I, I'm not going to talk anyone out of 250 to one shot. Um, Carlos Ortiz won uh, on the eve of the Masters in November. He's had to wait for his debut. Again, he has that against him that he is making his debut, but he's a good putter who hits his irons well. I could see him finishing in the top 20 without really threatening to win. Uh, Gary W chucks in the runners-up last time around, Sung Jai Im and Cameron Smith. Yeah, really like Sung Jay. You know, he's. I think a lot of people forget how young he is. He sometimes gets left out of the conversation as, as the best young players in the world. Every time he's gone to an iconic course, Augusta, Royal Melbourne, um, he's really stepped up and produced. And he, he's not missed a cut all year. He's had one bad round almost every tournament. If he can eliminate that um, with conditions in his favour, he's he's got a massive chance. And Cameron Smith, two top fives in four tries at Augusta. Um, he's showing that he can be a, a real specialist here. And the firmer, the better, you would think. So, yeah, they look too definite contenders to me. Mark M wants your best big priced bull striker. He's nailing his colours to Corey Connors. Yeah, I think Siwoo Kim's the one I really like, but Connors wouldn't have been far down the list. He is a brilliant ball striker. He's shown that his putting's improved and um, he went from outside the top 60 after round one in November to finishing 10th. And, and that's not the first time he's really come back from a slow start at Augusta as an amateur. He shot 80-69, which shows um, a real touch of class and, and, and some you know ability to stick with it, which will be key this week. So I like him a lot and he fits a lot of the trends. So 80 to one, I, I certainly wouldn't talk anyone out. He looks rock solid if you if you want a four to five banker to be the best of the three Canadians this week. Fantastic. It's a good week, this, isn't it? Aintree, the Grand National, plus the Masters. Fantastic. It will certainly do, Ed. Yeah, it's uh, it's the best golf tournament <laughs> of the year for me. I, sacrilege to, if, if, if you're an Open Championship fan, but I'll take the Masters over the Open uh, in, a, in a close finish. But yeah, it should be a great week. I'm looking forward to it. And I'll tell you what, I, present, I enjoy presenting the Grand National more than any other race. So it's a good combo. Ben, thanks a million. Thank you, Ed.